Hi, I'm Mason, and hopefully this microphone's better. And if not, whoops. If you're a game master who's been writing your own campaign for a while now, there's a pretty good chance you face some writer's block from time to time. But what if you didn't have to? Wonder how you'd do that? Perhaps a small town shopkeep finds it among their stock and puts it on sale without question. Or maybe a young academic or aspiring poet finds it on a desk and picks it up without thought. Whatever the case, this simple yet elegant pen has many secrets. It's magical, of course, but what does it do? Well, nothing but giving you the power of the gods. So, uh, calligraphy proficiency. Um, if you use it, you get calligraphy proficiency. But of course nothing's that simple, and the most innocuous of magic items are perfect vessels for horrible curses. While at first their penmanship may be immaculate, it will soon degrade into oblivion as they produce vile and incoherent poetry and prose, along with grisly, scratched drawings and doodles in dark, black ink. The parchment these wretched arts are scribbled on rot within hours, but the ink remains fresh. Soon enough, the would-be calligraphers find themselves writing and drawing without end, as their body withers and a multitude of monsters come to being. So yeah, a fun magic item. Probably give it to an NPC and not one of your players, unless you're like, evil evil. As the papers stack higher and higher, the first signs that someone is using one of these accursed pens will emerge, as one of the wayward scribbles rises off the page. Zipping around at high speeds, these tiny inky constructs float through the air erratically. And where there's one, there are many. These are scrawlings, and despite their minuscule size, they are dangerous scouts surveying this realm. With plenty of resistances and immunities, they're tougher than you might think. And not only can they take a hit, but they can dish them out as well. Fail a deck saving throw when they release an inky beam of energy your way, and you'll take 3d4 plus 3 force damage, or half as much on a success. And not only that, if this attack takes you down to zero hit points, there'll be nothing left of you but a puddle of inert ink. So, uh, don't fail that save. They also have the innate ability to pop between this plane and the ethereal realm, letting them blink repeatedly in and out of our reality once a day. Though there certainly are ways around that if the adventuring party is clever enough. After all, scrollings and all the other monsters in this video are made of living ink. And... While that can certainly be beneficial in some ways, it also makes them extra vulnerable when doused with enough water. Why is it spicy? Their speed is drastically reduced. Saving throws made against their inky beams are made with advantage, while the scrollings themselves have disadvantage on ability checks and saving throws. They also can't cast blink and take double damage until they use an action to dry off. So you're welcome, Water Genasi, for making the Create Water spell actually useful for once. But back to the point. These are only scouts for a greater, unknown force. Yes, they are deadly, but their primary motive is to observe. They may seem to act on random impulse, but they are plenty intelligent. Their flight may seem chaotic and haphazard, but in truth they are mapping out their surroundings, discovering every detail they can. And while they're pretty hard to miss when they're on the move, they are able to blend in with the shadows with ease when they remain still. But who do they observe for? Who do they report back to? Next to spring to life is a harrowing dark image. It's the caricature. These gory portraits, or gortricks, if you will, are sketches of anger-filled faces come to life. They can move with impressive speed thanks to the quick sketch ability that lets them dash with a bonus action. So they're fast, but not quite as fast as scrawlings. Imagine the way the pizza flew around in that one episode of Jimmy Neutron. Did, did that traumatize anyone else as a kid? I was like four to eight years old and I was terrified of the talking pizza. Like, genuinely scared. I, I think I'm still scared, actually. If the girl from the ring came out my TV, I wouldn't care. I will fist fight the Babadook in his funky little hat. But if the floating pizza comes for me, I'm gone. Though, if I were to face a caricature, I might not be so lucky. After all, it's a two-dimensional drawing. So all it has to do is turn sideways to cast invisibility on itself at will. When it comes to fighting, they've only got two options, really. The first is a bog-standard bite attack that does 2d6 plus 4 piercing damage. Nothing too special there. But that's not what makes them scary. If a caricature can manage to grapple onto a humanoid, they can force a DC 14 charisma saving throw to avoid having their body possessed as they latch onto their face like a horrible mask, 
before their image fades and their disguise is complete. A possessed individual is incapacitated, and the caricature has full control of their body. While attached like this, the host and the caricature split damage between one another. It's kinda hard to only hurt the drawing when it's attached to your buddy's face. Speaking of which, if they do latch onto the face of the barbarian or rogue, you're gonna have to start dealing with their sneak attack and battle axe a lot more than you're used to. Or if they're on a commoner or someone without better attacks, they'll still just bite you, cause that's always an option, right? But there's gotta be a way to get these off your friend's face. Well, if you want to try to pry them off with raw strength, you can certainly try, but perhaps some clever spells will be a bit more efficient. Or see what happens when you throw a bottle of Dasani on them. After all, the Scrawlings weren't a fan of that. Caricatures will often snap onto the face of all sorts of townspeople, but they'll often be found attached to movers and shakers, diplomats, nobles, and arcane practitioners who may be useful in furthering the goals of their master, whatever that may be. The last creature to find themselves stepping off the page is not a doodle or a drawing, but rather a manifestation of some of the strange and eldritch writings made by anyone so unfortunate to hold one of the muse's pens. While the last two baddies had surprising intelligence despite being the same category as Doodle Bob, these less so. Made of unintelligible poetry and prose, these strands of text are known as incomprehensions. If the scrollings are scouts and the caricatures are faces of the party, then these guys are the muscle. They don't think too hard. In fact, they don't think at all. All they do is do damage until the party has zero hit points. They fly through the air, able to zip by enemies without provoking opportunity attacks, which is oh so convenient because an object or creature they move within 5 feet of must make a dexterity saving throw or take 1d6 slashing damage once per turn. And that's just when they're moving past you. If they want to, they'll target you with a melee weapon attack to do 2d6 plus 5 slashing damage. They give you paper cuts. But of course, that's just the beginning. Any creature within 30 feet of the incomprehension that can both see it and knows how to read may be forced to make a DC 14 wisdom saving throw, as the confusing and really awful poetry boggles their mind. On a failure, they take 2d8 psychic damage, or half as much on a success. The poetry's so bad that it literally hurts to read. In fact, that's also what allows it to cast some of the spells that are in its repertoire. They can cast Mind Sliver or Vicious Mockery at will for some small damage paired with the target either having disadvantage on their next attack or having a D4 subtracted from their next save. They've also got Tasha's Mind Whip for some bigger psychic damage that'll also limit the target's options during their next turn, and Mind Spike which also does another flavor of psychic damage and has a bonus effect. They can cast those spells a few times a day without issue, but if things are looking extra dangerous, they've got one more option to cause some chaos. They can cast the 4th level spell Confusion once a day to really futz with the party. That's one of my favorites, cause it truly just lets you mess with anyone unfortunate enough to fail the associated save. Not only does that take their reaction away, but they literally have to roll on a table to determine whether they'll run in a random direction, stand completely still, randomly attack another creature, or get to do whatever they want. That'll last for a minute until the incomprehension loses concentration, or if an affected creature manages to pass the save at the end of each of their turns. So what might happen to a city infested with these inkblot constructs that a band of plucky adventurers will need to get to the bottom of? Perhaps rumors of a string of disappearances can be heard of at a tavern. Townsfolk gone missing without a trace, except for an acrid puddle of black liquid. Some have suggested that these are actually murders, but the head of the guard and chief of investigation insist that there is no evidence to believe that these are anything but missing people cases. Some of these disappearances have been common folk, while others have been lawmakers and aristocrats with arcane prowess. And curiously, the only evenings no one has gone missing was on a rainy afternoon. Who can be trusted? What greater scheme is at play? And who, or what, is responsible for the sudden appearance of that mysterious pen? And that's all I've got for you today. Whether you end up in a showdown with some scribbles, or unmasking a villain only to find out that the mask is the bad guy, I hope you have fun with these monsters at your table. Links to their stat blocks can be found in the description. And other than that, just do all the YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe, and share this video around if you're a big fan of these monsters. Other than that, Bye-bye!